Yo, what's up, people? What is up? Listen, there's no way, there's no way I'm not going to talk about this game. I've been meaning to do a post on this match for ages, right? And I was waiting for the right time. And with it being the 15th, 15 year anniversary, today is the day. Listen, who can forget the miracle of in, um, Istanbul? I'm going to say Istanbul. <laughs> who can forget the miracle of Istanbul 2005, 15 years ago on this day, right? Gerard, Smisa, Chabi Alonso, Dudek. Listen, this is, you know what? This is always going to be a where were you on the day occasion conversation whatever you want to say you can see i'm even gas talking about it 15 years mm -hmm. on listen let's let's go you know what let me take you on my journey of this whole run right let me just take you i want to i don't want to i don't want to bore you or spend too long on it well then again you can't spend too long on this but now nah, i'm gonna try and i'm gonna try and shrink this down right i can see i'm smiling i can never stop smiling for this this match right and it weren't like that all the way trust me but let me go back to the actual run itself now you've got to remember Liverpool 2005 we were coming off the the season where we were runners up were we runners up or did we come for I think we came fourth I think we came fourth the season before we came second we came second in 2003 and then I think we came fourth third or fourth in 2004 and it kind of everything dropped off that's why Julier left in then Julier leaves we get Benitez in I don't know much about Benitez apart from I see him busting up with Valencia and I thought okay this guy if he does what he does with Valencia because Valencia back then they used to have um, Aymar do you remember Aymar and um, oh, what's the guy is it Melito no it wasn't Melito Aymar who's the other guy there was a there was a really really good scorer for Valencia back then Valencia, Valencia had a wicked team so Benitez comes in and I think Benitez won the UEFA Cup oh. as well at the time with Valencia if my memory serves me right it's so long ago but he comes in he's got a bit of a rep first game of the season we play Bolton Wonders and we lose I was pissed right but there were some good signs we had Luis Garcia as well he was a new signing I liked Luis Garcia had about five chances in this match and he didn't score he just needed like you know he just needed to get it in the back of the net and get his confidence in but anyway so this game we lose that game so already we're on the back foot we're not off to a good start for the season then through this season now it's like you can see what Benitez was trying to do but we were having these like hit and miss results it's like Benitez was just like trying to figure out the squad so we're not looking at the title for this season but we're looking at just some stability and and and, and you know getting back on point so Benitez started making us a little bit harder to beat and then what happened was I remember the Champions League campaign didn't even start so well either we had this game against Olympiacos. Olympiacos were decent at this time. And they had um, Rivaldo. Rivaldo's gone over there. Brazilian star. Brazilian World Cup winner. So Rivaldo comes in now. He scores that free kick. Don't know if you remember this game. He scores the free kick. Basically, we have to win this game by two clear goals. Or we're out because of goal difference. So, second half now. Cinema Pong. <laughs> Cinema Pong goal. You're not flipping out. Cinema Pongo. God, he was never a great player, but you know what? I will give him his dues for his contribution to us getting there. Cinema Pongo pulls back a goal now. Look at the players that we had back then. But anyway, Cinema Pongo scores. Then, shortly afterwards, Neil Mella scores. Again, Neil Mella. You know what I mean? No disrespect. Mella, Mella, I know you might watch this, right? But you're not you, you wasn't a Robbie Fowler so you know what I mean it's not a disrespect it's not a diss we just were way off the quality we had um in in the past so yeah Neil Mella gets it to 3-2 so sorry 2-1 but we need to we need to score another one and then Gerard man comes up with that banger I think it was in the 83rd minute or something like that um oh man that was it that was, that was it man that was that was wicked so we get through right by the skin of our teeth to the round of 16. I can't for the life of me remember who played in that first match. I just had it in my head and it's gone now. I can't remember who played. I don't know if it was 
It wasn't. I don't think it was a difficult game, whoever we had. But we've, we play this game now. So quarterfinals, from what I remember. Quarterfinals, I was in Atlanta. So 2005, this is where I saw the game. I'm in, I'm in Atlanta, right? And I, I ran, I remember the people I was staying with, I said, listen, man, Liverpool's playing. Because um, the time zone is obviously different. I said, yo, get me to like a sports bar so I can watch this game. Right, I, I'm not opt I'm not super optimistic, but um, <laughs> watch this game because again we're playing Juventus, right? And Juventus was a banging team at the time. Liverpool, we were way off. We were way off. We didn't. Have, we had Jimmy Traore, Biscan. We we didn't have the players, man. Like them kind of players. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we get to this game now, and I think Hippia Hippia scores. Hippia scores a, um, a header. I think it's a header or a volley i think there's a corner comes in hippia scores anyway forget that hippia scored and then luis garcia scores this banger you gotta just check out the highlights man i've got it on my own playlist check out the playlist um champions leagues check it out man um garcia scores this banger and we beat juventus so we're we were the underdogs in that game we beat juventus we go to the next round now now we're playing chelsea semi-final Listen, this Chelsea team, right? As you know, Chelsea did. Um, I think they did the double the, the first season when Mourinho was there. Oh yeah, they did. They won the flipping Carling Cup of us that final that we should have won. But anyway, so Chelsea are phenomenal. Damian Duff, Joe Cole, Good Johnson, Robin, um, Makalele, Terry at the back, Carvalho, um, Paulo Ferreira. I can't remember who was playing left back. They were a unit. They were a strong team. Machines, right? We're totally written off. First game, I think we draw 0-0. We hold them at the bridge. And this is the season where Chelsea did the double over us. I think they beat us 3-1 at Anfield. And then they beat us 1-0 um, at, at the bridge. So Chelsea are just dominating us this season. So we scored that goal goal with Luis Garcia, man. We scored a goal goal now. And then obviously Chelsea pummeled us. We win the game. We're in the final. So again, underdogs. We win. We're in the final now. So a whole heap of people are like, this Liverpool team shouldn't be in the final. They shouldn't be there. So we're already written off. We're playing AC Milan. Badman team. Crespo. Um, Shevchenko. Kaka. Pirlo, Yapstam, Serginio, um, Maldini, Nesta, Dida, oh, this team, we shouldn't, listen, at that time, I'm not even, I'm not even being disrespectful to Liverpool, right, it's like we shouldn't even have been on the pitch with these guys, for the levels, right, and if I'm being honest, I'm being honest with you, I was, I was like, just happy that we were in the final at this stage. I really was because we definitely we rolled our luck against Chelsea. We rolled our luck in all the matches, but we were the underdog in all of the games. So we get to the final now, and then you're kind of like, listen, on the day itself, I go to work. I was working in the city at the time, so I'm working central London, and I'm opposite. Um, I'm working in Piccadilly Circus. If you know London, I'm in Piccadilly Circus, right? Haymarket. There's a sports bar across the road from where I work, right, me being naive, I don't realise, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to work late, I'm going to work till about 6.30, and then I'm going to cut across the road to watch the final, so when I come out of work now, I go to the um, to the sports bar, now this sports bar, I go, I was going there on the regs, like for lunches and stuff like that, on the regs all the time, regular in this place, so I go across the road now, and they're telling me, nah, listen, capacity, full, I said, listen, I'm on my own. It's just me. I'm... Mate, can't get in. I said, look, man, I need to get, I need to watch this final. I need to watch this final. He was like, nah, you, you, you can't come in. So this time, I'm I'm there till about 7... No, t sorry, till about 6.45. Match starts at 7.45, yeah? I'm there trying to plead with this guy. Security's not letting me in. So now I've got to find the next place to watch this game. So I'm running around Leicester Square... Piccadilly Circus. I'm trying to find. I'm going to um, JJ Moons. I'm going to all these different um, bars. Um, Youngs. I'm going everywhere to see. Are you showing the game? Are you showing the game? And everywhere I'm going that has got the game, they're at capacity. I can't get in. I can't get in. So about seven, 
about 7.15 it is now, half an hour to kick off. And I'm like, flipping hell, man. I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to see the game. So in the end, I had to take the hit because I wanted, because what it was, I was like, if we win, I want to be somewhere where the atmosphere is popping. And then I had to make an executive decision. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to jump back on the train, back up to Northwest London, and I'm going to have to watch it at home. I'm going to have to watch it at home because now, now it's desperation time. Half an hour before kickoff, I've got to get back. So I jump on the train, get back home. I'm not even lying. I got through the door just when um, and pushed the telly on just as the kickoff was there. So I put it, so I run up, I run up, said, threw my case on the floor and I just put the telly on, bam. So I'm in, I'm, I'm in the house and no word of a lie, man's taken off his shoes and Maldini scored. <laughs> Maldini scored 40 odd seconds. It's like, like, I was like, oh my God. So the next minute now, so I'm already vexed. I'm already vexed. So I've gone from being a bit nervous in, in central London, frustrated now, can't can't see the game down there, still excited on the train home, and then I open, I get, put the key through the door, fling down my stuff, and we're one goal down uh, right at the start. So now I'm sitting there and I'm watching this game, and Milan were absolutely destroying us in this game. Absolutely destroying us. So for me, I'm looking now, any little um, little thing that we can hold on to, to, to nick a goal or whatever else, I'm holding on to it. So, Milan now, no, sorry, we're attacking, right? I can't remember what minute this is, we're attacking now. And someone puts a ball through to Luis Garcia. Luis Garcia is running and Nesta handballs the ball. The referee's not having it. So as we're putting our hands up, like, rev, rev, rev. The ball gets sent down to, um, I think it was Kaka. I can't remember who puts the ball through, man. But they put the ball through. And then I remember, I think it was Shevchenko. Shevchenko puts it back. And Crespo just puts it in. 2-0. So I'm just like, oh, man. So I'm thinking already. Because remember, we're looking at the team. Jimmy Traore, Steve Finnan, Carragher, Hippia, Barros, Luis Garcia. You know, it, it's not on paper. It's not. We're, we're playing Perlo, Kaka, Stam, Shevchenko. We, you know what I mean? So already we're 2 0 down. So I'm not seeing how we're going to do this. So all of a sudden now, they start pinging it around. Kaka's controlling the game. Kaka's just taking a the piss. Then you've got this third goal, man. And Kaka, he sends this ball through. And Carragher's on full stretch. And it's like it's just enough to beat Carragher's full stretch. And Crespo, man, the finish on this goal, the the, the flick, he just, he just dinks it over um, Dudek, man. And when that goal went in, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, this is embarrassing. And I remember I was watching it on Sky. I remember Andy Gray. You can never find this commentary anywhere, right? Andy Gray, there's a bit where, um, so when Crespo, Crespo puts the game in and you hear Andy Gray, he's, he's saying something, 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 and then he goes, game over. Like, it's done. Liverpool are dead. I, and I always try to look for that commentary again because it's, su it, it's such a definitive moment because he's like, yeah, this game's over. We're dead. 3 0 at half time, getting embarrassed. And I remember seeing um, Gattuso. At hot, walking down the tunnel and he touches the cup and they're like you, you can see the Milan players gassing and I went to the kitchen and I made a I made a I think I made a drink I can't remember what else I did and I'm not even joking with you my eyes I felt like my eyes were welling up I've I've in my mind I'd, I almost didn't want the second half to come I was like no one in my no one in my um none of the games I've watched in my in my life in the in the Champions League or European Cup have I seen someone in the final get beat 5-0, five 5-0, nil, five or 6-0, nil. but I was like, I think we're going to get smashed, the, the last time I saw a team get annihilated in the final was Milan smashing Barcelona, 4-0, um, and I think it was in 1990 or 1991, and they destroyed them, they beat them 4-0, Desai scored, I thought we were going to get beat 5 or 6-0, I'm not even joking, and 
the second half comes now. And it was like, it was, at first, it was like, it was just continuing. And Harry Kuehl's injured, so he's gone off. Haman comes on. Haman coming on was just, I think if Kuehl stayed on, we would have got beat 5-0 or 6-0. I'm telling you, if Kuehl didn't go off and Haman didn't come on and steady the ship, we would have got beaten 5-0. I'd like to, put your comments in the, in, the, in the comment section below and tell me if you agree. Whoever's watched the game, if you remember it, we were lost 5-0. Haman came and steadied the ship. And then let me say to you, Risa, when he did, when he did that cross, he, he fails the cross the first time. And he puts that cross in. When Gerrard scored, I was like, and I'm one of the most optimistic Liverpool fans you'll ever um, find. When Gerrard scored that goal, I thought to myself, okay, cool. <laughs> cool, we got something back. We got something back. 3-1 against this Milan team. I, I can live with that. 3-1. It's cool. But then while the the sort of you while while the while the fans are kinda of murmuring and whatever else, man, the ball's on the left. I think Risa Risa pushes it to Haman. And Haman lays it off to Smisa. And when Smisa hits this goal, when I say to you, I flew out the settee, man. I flew out of the sofa. Like, I, was like, ah! I couldn't believe it. 3 2. When Smisa hits that goal, that's when I started to believe. That is when I started to be. I was like, I can't believe this. We're back in the game. I can't believe this. And you know, you look, you know, when you see the commentary and they, sh they start showing like the players and stuff, you could look in Milan's eyes. They were like, what the F is going on here? Because this team is nowhere near. The same level of us. We've we murked them for about 50 minutes. Then all of a sudden, Gerard, Alonso, Carragher, everyone's just up a level. Then you got the move now when Carragher lays it through to um Gerard. And then what happens? Who does he does, does he lay it into Barros? I can't remember anyway, but I know Gerard gets a one-on-one. -on -one. And Gattuso draws him down. And when he done that, I thought it was a red card for Gattuso plus the penalty. But I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that we were we had a chance to equalise. And I was jumping, screaming, going mad. But then I was like, oh my god, it's a penalty though. I'd rather I would have rather Gerard got through and took the shot. Because Gerard would have scored. There's no doubt about it. Gerard would have scored. So then <clears throat> the penalty comes now. So I'm thinking Stevie G's going to take it. So when I see Alonso step up, I was like, oh shit. I'm not sure about his record. I'm not actually sure. And Dida just looked massive in the goal. Dida, Dida looked, uh, Dida filled the goal. He was a big guy. So then when Alonso steps up, right, when he misses the penalty, um, for a millisecond, I'm like, oh, like that. I can't believe this. So close, and literally in 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 a split second, I see Alonso lash it with the, with his left foot. I couldn't because I didn't because I didn't know Alonso was two footed. So when I see he's missed the penalty, and it was a good to be to be fair, it was a good penalty. When he takes the penalty and he misses, I thought it look it looks a bit like Dida's um, pushed it away. And I see Alonso lash it with the left foot, man. I couldn't believe it. Voice was already gone by that time. Screaming, I was jumping around the house, jumping. My neighbour must have thought I was a lunatic. I'm jumping around, jumping around by myself in the house, going mad. So we get to three three now. So now in my mind, I'm like, okay, at least we haven't been embarrassed. And now I'm almost I'm kind of almost waiting for Milan to score again. Because I'm thinking to myself, they're gonna shake this off now, they're gonna shake it off, and they're gonna Pirlo's gonna come back, Kaka's gonna come back. Shevchenko is going to probably score the winner. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen now. I've lost, I've lost all train of thought. Then the final just started going mad. Carragher's got cramp. Um, Dudek does a double save. And Shevchenko misses again. And Triore's doing stuff off the line. And it just went mad. But the maddest thing was, when we got to the penalty shootout, that was the, that was the first time in the game where I thought, we can win this. We can win this. And then the minute, and then I saw Carragher talking to Dudek, 
didn't think nothing of it too much um, at the time. But I see Carragher talking to Dudek. And then I just remember Serginho, man. Serginho. He, he, to be fair with you, his miss completely shifted the momentum for that penalty shootout. Because I think if he puts that away, I, I don't know, I reckon one of the Liverpool players potentially would have cracked. But the, he, it, it was like the comeback, the Shevchenko save, and then this guy sends it out of the stadium. This is Liverpool's cup. So we start cleaning our penalties away. You know what I mean? Cissé scores, Haman scores, um, Smisa scores. I was surprised that Risa missed. I was surprised that Risa missed because he's normally very, um, he's just clinical normally in those positions. But um, I didn't think she, I didn't think, think Shevchenko was going to miss either. So when he missed, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. When he missed, it was like, ah, uh, it was one of the most amazing. It's 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 one of the most amazing. It, it's probably is the amazing night for me in football in, in my Liverpool football history. Um, when we won the league in nineteen ninety, I was. I was 13. Yeah, I was 13 when we won the league. And when we won, when we won the FA Cup, I was, I was ecstatic in 89. 1989, I was ecstatic. That was amazing. Um, but I, I don't think anything will top 2005. Until this title will, this title that we get now, number 19, that is going to send me over the edge. But we haven't got it yet. So 2005 right now is the eclipse because last year's Champions League final. Don't get it twisted. I lost my voice there as well. But we were favourites to beat um, Tottenham. We were favourites to beat Tottenham. I was actually more distraught with the Real Madrid one. I think we, we, if Salah didn't get injured, we would have killed them as well. That that game really pisses me off. There's two games in particular that really piss me off. The 2007 Champions League final against Milan. Because our team was better. We were better than the 2005 team. And we should have beaten them. We pummeled them. They were like some pensioners in that game. And they used it. Inzaghi used his experience and he won the game. That pisses me off that game. I can't watch it even now. But the the, the 2018 final with, with, with Ramos. <sighs> that Ramos. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I hate Ramos. I hate, I hate Sergio Ramos. That's a strong word. I can't stand that guy. I wish, <laughs> I wish. Anyway, I wish someone put him into the stands. I'm not even joking. What he did to Salah is is just unforgivable. What he did to Salah. I don't want to hear nothing about gamesmanship and professionalism. What he did to Salah is dis disgusting. You know what I'm saying? Because people train for these moments, like the you know finals. Play fair, play fair, and lose the final fairly. Don't do them kind of nastiness. You know what I'm saying? I hate Ramos. And he's, I think he's the only football player I hate. I actually hate. And I keep saying that word. I think he's scum. But anyway, we rectified it. The the, the following. You can see, you, you see me, I'm a passionate fan. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't play about, I take this thing serious. But yeah, um, we, we redeemed ourselves the following year. But this title will take us over the edge. But anyway, the miracle of Istanbul, man. It will never, ever get old. I've got it on my playlist. So check check out my playlist. I've got it there. Just loop it. I could watch it all day long. I know all of the commentary. I know I know everything about it. I love that game. So yeah, I just wanted to share my experience of that match, man, because it was amazing. Amazing. Going into work the following day and everyone's coming up to you like, bro, your, your team done it. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, as much as I'm down in London, I, don't, I missed the parade. I didn't get to do the um, parade. I was quite young. Um, I was 20, was I 25, 26 back then? Um, I didn't get a chance to do the parade. I didn't get a chance. And I missed last year's parade as well. So that's why this year was going to be my year, man. I was going up to Liverpool and uh, um, I was going to do the parade. I knew we were going to win the title. I just I booked the hotel and everything. And um, it's like I'm cursed. <laughs> it's like I'm cursed. So, um, yeah, hopefully things resume and I can, I can go out there. But anyway, I'm digressing. This is the end. See, I've been speaking for 24 minutes. <laughs> This is probably my longest video. I don't normally talk so long, but um, I love this final, man. I can't get sick of it. I hope you don't. Um, I hope you enjoyed my story um, about the final. Um, everyone should have a story about that final. Yeah, but the, the saddest thing about that, the 2005 final is that I was on my own when I watched it. Um, so that was quite sad. But um, it didn't matter. <laughs>
anyway people i'm out i've got some more posts coming but listen go into the playlist and just check out the final watch it again man it will you never if you're ever feeling down watch that final man you can't get sick of that you can't get old, um, tired of it you can't get tired of it anyway i'm out peace